So now we've got a handle on what a financial professional is and what they do. Let's talk about why this role is so critical for clients and the companies themselves. You might be thinking, what the heck do I even need a financial services professional for? right? Just build a plan, make a recommendation, reach out to make sure their financial goals are being met. Can a consumer just buy products online? Wouldn't that be easier for the consumer and cheaper for the business so they don't have to hire all these financial services reps? Good question. And that one deserves a good in-depth answer. So let's dive into that. So let's start with the client. Why do they need a financial services professional anyway? Simply put, a financial rep is there to educate, recommend, and execute for the client. Educate. Even with all the information on the internet today, there is still going to be an information gap with what a prospect wants and what they need. That kind of goes back to the point of when I stated that what your client wants might not even necessarily be suitable for them, and it might not necessarily even be realistic for them to reach as part of their financial goals. And this is especially true in the financial world. Financial products and services are super complex, and it might take an individual months or even years to fully understand all of the options and nuances that are available to them. Whereas a financial professional knows or has access to all of this information at their fingertips. A rep's job is to curate and tailor the information specifically to the customer they are talking to. Going back to the point of someone just being able to go online and pick something out and buy something. Part of what differentiates this career and you as a financial services representative is what you're offering is not traditional sales. This is not something that someone can just order online and get shipped to their front door. Not even something that they can go into the store and pick up off the shelf. They have to qualify. They have to apply. So this truly differentiates you, especially in the area of educating your potential clients that they need you if they want this thing, right? They can't just go out and get it. They have to qualify. There's paperwork. There's background checks. There's all sorts of documentation that they may need to provide in order to give you an idea of what their current financial snapshot is. So without those things, they can't necessarily just go out and get them. That's why they have financial services reps. We truly are experts at what is available to clients and what is a good fit for them. Because remember, you have to qualify. And if you don't qualify, you simply just can't get that product or service. We are here to help navigate you through all the paperwork, all the loops, all of the hurdles that you will come across when developing a financial plan. Now imagine how much easier that would be for the prospect if they had you to hold their hand along the way, to teach them about what is not only right for them, but how they can realistically get there. Also, how many times do you look something up online and you have no idea what the language used even means? There's so much terminology and different phrases that just might go straight over your head. Why? Because you're doing research on something you are not well versed in. Financial services reps are here to break that language down to you, to layman terms, and to really teach people what those phrases and words mean, how they affect them, and how they apply to them. Another thing is if there are certain financial services or products that one can maybe easily get online or on their own, what potential clients don't realize is when you do that, there are hidden fees. So the fees to just go online and get something yourself may be higher as opposed to if you go directly to a rep. Now, why is that? Think about all the steps that are involved when you go online to do something. There's the website. It costs money to make a website. There's customer service. It costs money to pay the people to answer the phone if you have an issue on their website. Then there's the rep. And the rep is the person who is actually licensed to provide you with the product. A customer service rep is typically not a licensed professional. Think about all the steps it'll take and all the middlemen you have to go through just to get to a rep. Wouldn't it be easier if you cut out all that nonsense and the rep can just come and work directly with you? And that's where you come in as a financial services representative. 
So the fees are typically lower if a client chooses to work directly with you. There's no middlemen involved, so they can get their answers more quickly as opposed to if they had to go on a website and speak to customer service before. And you get to offer your clients a tailored one-on-one -on -one custom approach. Individuals need guidance and recommendation. Unfortunately, financial literacy is very low amongst a majority of people. The financial world is full of jargon and misinformation. Remember when I was talking about all those unique phrases and words? Consumers are all too often just overwhelmed and confused regarding which investments or maybe insurance vehicles are appropriate for them. The greatest role a financial rep plays is providing education and then recommendations to clients so suitable decisions can be made. Lastly, a financial services rep is there to execute. Even if an individual knows all there is to know about a particular product or service and needs no education or recommendations, a financial professional will bring immense value to the table at the execution phase. Execution on these products, such as the investments, the insurance, is super important. However, it is very complex. It is overwhelming for an individual who is not well versed on this topic. And that is where you come in. You get all the paperwork done, you navigate through all of the state and federal regulations, and you're able to do it with cutting out the middlemen. There's normally a lot of paperwork involved, and this industry is very heavily regulated on both the state and federal level. So your job is to help your client navigate through all those regulations and all those hurdles that come up along the way. Okay, so it makes sense why a person needs a financial rep, but why do companies need reps? The first and the most obvious is that they bring in clients. The clients are the ones that help the company make money. Specifically, this is revenue. The money generated from the products or services that you are getting clients to sign up for allows the company to grow and ultimately service more clients. While it may seem obvious or trivial, having sufficient revenue is the most important and critical component of any business. Without sufficient revenues, the company will flounder and die. Revenues pay all the salaries, they pay for investments in product development, and they literally keep the lights on. Come on, you gotta pay those bills, right? <laughs> so not to sound dramatic, but without revenue, there will be no company. Naturally, to bring in revenue, reps will be interacting with the customer or the potential client. These interactions during the sales process allow the reps to do a number of things. For starters, each time a rep speaks with the prospect. They are educating the prospect and the market on the company's products and services. They're also building brand awareness. What if someone had never heard of that company before? It's common and that's where you come in. You're bringing the brand to the client. They're spreading the word of the company and its products and benefits that they are offering. During these interactions, the client is also providing feedback to the rep on their pains, needs, and wants. During these interactions, feedback is super important. So you can go back to your team or your manager, let them know what your experience was with that prospect, and that can be a learning tool for everyone. Now, this is super important when it comes to training and development. So your feedback is important to the company. Lastly, during these interactions, the rep is building trust with the customer and the market as a whole. The rep is the face of the company, and a good rep creates an environment for the prospect. Hopefully, you now have an idea of why the role is so important for both the clients and the firm you work with. The last thing to point out is this industry is ripe with opportunities, right? The U.S. has a super increasing aging population. What does that mean? The population is aging. People are growing older. This means more and more people will be looking for financial advice as they get older because we know as you get older, you're more mature and you tend to make better decisions. So hopefully you're making a better decision about your financial planning.
And many of the current advisors are retiring every year. You will come across a lot of reps who have been in this business for 20, 30, even 40 plus years. They're eventually going to retire. Now, educating your clients is super important. Like I said, that's 50% of the job. Now, the pandemic, although it was very unfortunate, it was a wake-up call for many prospects because they realized that they didn't have their financial plans in place. This opened up a ton of opportunity for us as reps. It provided a new client base in states that you may not have ever thought you'd be working in. So you can obtain a non-resident license, and although you may be located in New York or California, you can have clients in Florida, Texas, Pennsylvania, you name it. So this pandemic was a wake up call and it had an increased opportunity to work remotely. Now, remember what I said about flexibility. You could have worked remotely beforehand, but chances were you did not work remotely beforehand. You were out in front of people. This is a huge face-to-face, person-to-person job. If you're not getting in front of people, you're not making money. And that's simply the fact of the matter. However, this pandemic allowed me to get in front of more people. Why? Because I was able to get in front of people in all different states. And that was a huge benefit.